We are back with Willem Middlecope now. He is the author of The Big Reset. Um, welcome back to Stansbury Investor for part two of our conversation, Willem. Thank you. Uh, great to be back. So in this segment now, we're going to be talking about the silver squeeze. It's the story that goes away and then comes back in full force. And the question, Willem, is what's going to be that catalyst uh, that will finally get the squeeze happening and push prices higher here? Uh, well, I've been an investor in silver since 2002 myself. And for the last 20 years, I've been hearing stories that we might have a silver squeeze one day and silver might go to $100 and there will be shortages. And I think we came very close in 2010, 2015, uh, 2010, 2011, uh, when silver jumped from $10 to $50. And I was very active during that move myself. And then uh, I, I lost a lot of money May 1st, 2011, because there was a raid on, on, on silver. Uh, and during the very quiet Asian hours, trading hours, they brought, they pushed silver down very hard, very aggressive. And I think it's done by, by selling um, silver on paper through the futures market. And, and, and we know this has been ongoing for some decades also with platinum and palladium and also with gold. So there's this tug of war between the central bank interest, the Wall Street interest and, and the hard asset investors. And until, well, today, the central bankers and the bankers interest have succeeded in controlling the silver price. But now we've seen this huge movement, a grassroots movement, which started out of nowhere uh, early February this year, in which many, many people, and especially from the younger generations, all started to buy some physical silver. And this really has caused quite a bit of stress within the silver bullion markets. And I've, I've got some facts here. If we look at the... Um, physical ounces, silver ounces being delivered from the COMEX system. This was in April, 20 million ounces. Normally in, in an April month, two or three million ounces need to be delivered. Now we hear uh, of the stress uh, from uh, Australia because there's quite a bit of silver being sold in an allocated pool accounts. And I think even in North America, and Kitco, all these suppliers, they sold a lot of silver uh, unallocated, which means it, um, that you, you have this exposure to silver, but you don't pay any storage fees, so you, you're you not sure if the silver is really there. And, and um, especially in Asia, I saw a report that a, a, a silver dealer in Singapore is bu building this private vault to store 15,000 tons of silver. So there's a lot of stress coming to the system, and, and this time it, it could be for real. How help clarify this, okay, because I just read a, a report from the Silver Institute that said despite global mine closures in 2020 and historic investment demand, the silver market actually saw its biggest surplus on record. They were saying the issue in regards to silver supply is not actual supply, but the form of the silver, right? So investment product, there was a shortage there, but there's not necessarily a, a silver supply shortage. Um, of course, in all these stories, there's a lot of spin. So they tell you there's not a real shortage. It's just not available in the right size of product. But I, I have this nice report, which came out April 15. And this is a, a report published by the LBMA. LBMA is, as you know, the official um, association in London looking after all these um, um, uh, these silver um, um uh, holdings for the, uh, the, the billion banks. And uh, in this report, and um, it is very interesting because this is from the horse's mouth, they say that early 2021, there was this unprecedented um, uh, uh, demand for physical silver. And there were real concerns that London would run out of silver. This is in the official report from the LBMA. So it tells you a lot. And um, if you look at the numbers of available silver above the ground, yes, there is a few billion ounces of silver available. But if you really study that in detail, it turns out that 70 or 80% of that silver 
is held by ETFs. So that's silver, which is owned by investors. So you can't sell that silver another time. And of course, there are many rumors, the many stories that every ounce of silver has been resold a few times. But now more and more people are starting to buy physical silver and demand delivery. And that's what happens now, right? like the 20 million ounces being delivered from the Comex vaults in, in just in the last few weeks. Then you get real stress in the system. And Maybe we touched upon this in our previous talk, but there's a great example from a few years ago. We had a similar situation with Palladium. So there was a huge overhang of some paper shortage in Palladium. Um, they had very large positions in, in, in Palladium. And so they could control the Palladium price by selling paper Palladium on the future markets. But then we had this huge demand coming from the car industry. And then um, the shortage weren't able to supply uh, physical palladium for that price. And then we saw a collapse of the short position on, in palladium and, and the price of palladium uh, skyrocketed and went, went up 4x. And, and a similar situation could, could happen now within silver, but silver is much more serious, of course, for the, for the, for the financial system compared to palladium. Um, so I, I had asked the audience to send him some, some questions for you. And one of the, the biggest, most, the most common question I got for you, Willem, was they want to know if you're buying more physical silver here ahead of um, a rally that's taking place. And maybe you can shed light on this, May Day silver. Um, so there is a, 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 a focused movement now looking to buy more physical silver. Yeah, I think this um, grassroots movement, which started early February, uh, it continues uh, to this very day. And now there's this um, there's this uh, call for buying more fiscal silver around May 1st, which is 10 years after the May 1st, 2011 massacre. And um, I've been buying fiscal silver myself for my own private account, but I also we also have been buying fiscal silver for our fund. Um, we can only um, invest in physical products through listed uh, listed uh, equities. So we use the PSLV, the Sprott uh, Silver Trust. And um, if you study the holdings now and outstanding units of the PSLV, the, so the ETF uh, owned by Sprott, um, there's a huge demand for that for that product. And if you compare that to the demand for the SLV, which is the main silver ETF, one could say, people are selling the SLV and buying the PSLV because they trust the Canadian uh, Sprott holdings and they distrust the US SLV holdings. So um, an extra layer of um, demand around uh, May 1st could, could really bring more stress to the silver market and might even break the paper shorts. Wow. Well, we will be following this story closely and we will see what happens. William Middlecope, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of Stansberry Investor. We'll have much more for you, so be sure to stay tuned. In the meantime, remember to share us where you watch us. That's it for me. I'm Daniela Kamboni.